What do you tell people to do with their money, how to be aware of money, and how is money used in a similar way as a psychological tool? Money doesn't really exist, it's a theory. Um, if, if you look at how the world's been acquired, it's been done by a banking scam where you lend people money that doesn't exist, we call it credit, and you charge them interest on it. And if they don't pay the money back plus interest, then you get their wealth that does exist. You get their home, their business, their land, their resources, whatever. And we've been through a process of banks um, lending credit figures on a screen um, greatly in excess of what they have as assets called fractional reserve lending um, and then when they can't pay it back because often the banks have made have taken actions that have crashed the economy like in 2008 um, the banks then get all the things they've lent money on the real wealth of the world and what's happened in this process of lending credit getting the real resources when they can't pay back the credit um, has sucked the wealth of the world, the real wealth of the world in, into the hands of a very, very few people and left uh, uh, out there most of the rest of the population with something called money. And money only buys anything because we take it seriously. You know, if, 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 if it's just a piece of paper, and this is the point, it's meant not even to be a piece of paper, it's meant to, to be purely electronic. Um, and so we have this fresh air money that is worth something because the buyer and the seller believe in it, and only because of that. Um, and the real wealth of the world has been sucked into the hands of a very few people by lending this scam called credit. Another interesting thing about it, this um, money situation is when you go to a bank and you say borrow £50,000, they'll type into your account £50,000 in, in credit. Where's the credit come from? Uh, uh, here. But you're not paying back uh, £50,000. You're paying back £50,000 plus interest. The interest is never created, only the principal. Because people think that governments create money. Money is overwhelmingly created by private banks issuing credit. That's, that's how so-called money comes into circulation. So, what this means is creating credit for the principal but not the interest is that at no point is there ever enough money credit or otherwise in circulation to pay back all the debt and all the interest on the debt outstanding so people losing their homes and their businesses and their resources etc is built into the system on purpose now when there's an expansion of the money supply an expansion of of, of of, of money in circulation, Peter paying Paul, that, that seems you know to, to, to hide it to an extent. But once you um, squeeze the money supply, you take money out of circulation, it becomes obvious that there's nothing like enough money in circulation to pay back all the debt. So there's people losing their homes, their, 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 their resources, their, their, their um, things that they own for no other reason that there simply is not enough money to, for everyone to pay back the debt. So what do the banks do? Ooh, we'll have that. And this has been going on for centuries and, and they've, they've hijacked the real wealth of the world um, by doing this. And the next stage, which is in my books from the early 1990s, is the cashless society. You know, I was pointing out purely by knowledge of what, what this agenda was, that they were going to get rid of cash. And look, look at it. Cash is flying out of circulation. In some places like Sweden, it's almost totally cashless. They're shutting down bank branches 
so you cannot interact with a bank branch locally with cash. You have to do it online because that's electronic money and eventually they're going to take the cash out of circulation. Why? Because um, when you go into a store now or anywhere and you give them a credit card, electronic money, um, and the, they say, sorry, uh, the system won't accept your card, well, you can still pay cash. But when there's no cash in circulation, um, your electronic money, which is meant to go through a microchip eventually, um, when they say the system won't accept your, your microchip or your card, you have no other means of purchase. So whoever controls the, 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 the system is dictating whether you can purchase or whether you can't, whether you can eat or whether you can't. And the only other alternative to that would be barter. And I'll tell you what the plan is. The plan is to ban barter, to make it illegal on the basis that they, won't be, they, they can't tax it. So that, that's along the line as well. How does cryptocurrency play into this? I'm not saying that, um, that there aren't there couldn't be good things with, um, with things like uh, uh, Bitcoin and stuff like that. As long as cash stays in circulation, that's the key. While cash is in circulation, you have other points of, uh, or, or ways of purchase. Once there's no cash and you have only cashless digital currencies, then whoever controls them controls everything. And not only that, they can wipe your bank account. If you're a dissident of the system, as this moves on into more extremes, they can wipe your bank account and, 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 and it's just gone. Because all it is is figures on a screen. You can wipe figures on a screen in a second. You can, from a central point, crash the entire economy by controlling digital money um, and digital processes. And the idea eventually problem, reaction, solution, create the problem and then offer the solution, is to have a gigantic crash, which they will instigate. And then to overcome the crash, they will propose a totally new um, economic system of central control to uh, be the solution to the problem they've created, which is crashing the economy. And the more control they have over money digitally, electrically, the easier it is to do that. What this marks to me is the end of the American Empire. And because that's what happened with the end of the Roman Empire. And what happened at the end of the Roman Empire, the, uh, the, the leaders of Rome debased the currency. They, they, they were taking silver coins and gold coins, they were filing them and melting them and doing all these goofy things. They were fighting wars, you know, we're still fighting wars that we couldn't afford, they couldn't afford. And they started taxing the worker. And back in Roman times, the worker was the farmer or the yeoman. And so the government, those fat asses up there were just, just taxing the crap out of the worker. And pretty soon the worker says, why should I work? Because, you know, I've got to just keep giving my money to the government. And pretty soon they built, they called them Roman circuses, you know, so they're the big coliseums and they were feeding lions, I mean, people to lions and all that other stuff. You know, today we have the Super Bowl and the March Madness and everything's the same, you know, it's the same. Our Federal Reserve Bank, our Treasury and our government has messed up the US dollar so much that they have to find a way to keep people happy. So the stimulus money they print, everybody says, oh God, you know, it's because of they shut the economy down and this and that. And everybody says, yeah, so they're going to give me PPP and all of this stuff. So just remember this, that money comes from production. And when we pay people not to produce, which is PPP and all that, we're just paying them not to revolt. You know, and that's what happened during the Roman times. And so I, that's why I say it's the end of the American empire because our money is corrupt. So that's basically it. Now, would I take the money? Absolutely. You know, we're talking about, don't fight the government, don't fight the Fed, don't fight politics. 
you know, if they're going to give me a thousand bucks, I'll take it. But I would convert it into either gold, silver or Bitcoin. You've got to be smarter than the government, which is not that hard to do. And it's, it's just coming apart right now. And, you know, like when, uh, when the Fed talks about stimulus checks, well, the only people that get rich, you know, they get all that money for free. It goes into them via BlackRock, a hedge fund, and it goes straight into Wall Street. And then the guys who own Facebook and Amazon get richer. UBI is a small part of it. They're, what they're doing is they're propping up zombies. And the zombies are companies that are mismanaged, like Hertz right now is completely bankrupt. Boeing is bankrupt. Um, the cruise ships are bankrupt. Ford's bankrupt. And the Fed, the Treasury, and Wall Street keep propping them up. I've said to your generation, you have more power today with that iPhone than any other generation in history. Do you know what I mean? The, that iPhone, is that 2007 or 2009 it came out? Man, you guys have so much power to be the best entrepreneurs in the world. So there's a lot of good things happening for you guys, except if you went to school and you're taught by those incompetent school teachers, like my poor dad. Like, they're good people, but they haven't got any, as, as they say in Spanish, no cajones, no cajones. The Federal Reserve Bank is a socialist or a communist organization, but they'll never tell you that. When I was about 25 years old, I started studying this stuff, and the more I studied, the more I felt I needed a shower. You know, I mean, they, they were just lying to us. When the market crashed into 2020, March of 2020, only 16% of the teachers, firefighters, and police officers' pension was funded, 16%. So they had $16 for every 100 they owed. Now it's down to six. They're broke. So they're covering all of this up, so they want to bring UBI in so they can just mass produce money and then so they're going to pay people not to work so they can escape 